Okay, so I'm, I'm Herbie Newell and I'm a professor here at Newcastle. Um, my particular area of interest is discovering new drugs to treat cancer. I came up here in, in 1989 and when we got here there wasn't any drug discovery so we built up a drug discovery group and one of the first targets we started working on was a target called polyADP ribose polymerase or PARP. And we were working on this because we knew this protein could help cancer cells become resistant to drug and radiation therapy. And we thought that by making an inhibitor of this enzyme, PARP, that we'd be able to resensitize or increase the activity of the conventional drugs and radiation therapy that we were using. So we made a compound. We used what at the time was a very new technique, computer-aided drug design, using what were increasingly becoming available as the supercomputers, atomic level information to design the drug so that we could get to where we wanted to much more quickly. And when we had that drug, we took it into patients and my clinical colleague, Ruth Plummer, that you'll be meeting in a moment, she was the first doctor in the whole world to give one of these PARP inhibitors to a cancer patient here in Newcastle. So we started these clinical trials and initially at very low doses, very safe doses, and we found pretty quickly that this drug was indeed a very well tolerated drug. But then a really interesting piece of work was done, led by a guy called Thomas Helliday working down in Sheffield, where you'll be going. And that's one of the great things about the CRUK community. We're a real network and we do, of course, talk to each other all the time. And I was down in Sheffield giving a talk and Thomas said to me, Herbie, I've got this interesting result in the lab. Just, just wanted to like to show it to you. And he showed me that he, cancer cells that he was working on that came from women who had the particular type of breast or ovarian cancer which was due to a genetic defect were fantastically sensitive to these PARP inhibitors alone. It wasn't in combination with a cytotoxic drug, it was the PARP inhibitor alone and I said blimey Thomas that looks really interesting you need to come up to Newcastle and tell us about it. So he came up, gave us a talk and started working with Nicola Curtin, one of my colleagues here and Nicola and Thomas together showed that this was really true and it was true not just in cells in culture, in other preclinical models and to cut a long story short of course we tried it out in the clinic and so now we've got a potential treatment for these women who have this really incredibly challenging situation to deal with where they know because their mums or aunties or perhaps sisters have died of breast and ovarian cancer they've been tested for genetic predisposition and it's been found that they actually unfortunately have this defect but now potentially we've got a way of treating women who have that genetic predisposition. We already know from clinical trials that have been done on the compound we developed here and indeed other drugs of the same class that against ladies who have cancer already they can work. But the, the real hope here, the holy grail, is that we'll be able to use these drugs to stop the cancers ever forming in the first place in these women. And we don't know yet what that's going to look like. It may be a week once a year, it may be a month once a year, but just maybe to take these drugs, which as I said at the beginning, are very well tolerated for a short period to stop them ever getting the cancer in the first place. And, and if, if we can pull that off, it will be a fantastic round circle of starting with a basic understanding of DNA damage and repair processes, genetic predisposition, drug design, early phase trials, and then ultimately a way of stopping women who get cancer from even getting the disease in the first place. Ms. Wallace!